So last night, the ninth seeded New Orleans Pelicans won their Western Conference playing game against the 10th seeded Spurs to advance in the play-in tournament. Pelicans head coach Willie Green had his team executing plays as if they were a contender in the Western Conference. And today, I want to break down why it looks like they have what it takes to upset the LA Clippers on Friday night in their play-in tournament matchup. What's up guys, SCJ here, and if you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to give it a like as it helps out a lot, and if you're new to the channel and or enjoy the NBA, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. So as mentioned in the intro, the New Orleans Pelicans knocked off the San Antonio Spurs in the 9 vs 10 seed matchup in the Western Conference play-in tournament as they won by a score of 113 to 103, and like I said in the intro, they executed their plays phenomenally. Now the Pelicans had a 21 point lead with 10.45 remaining in the fourth quarter, so letting the lead get down to just 6 points late in the fourth, especially against a young 10 seeded Spurs team, shows that the team does still have their flaws, which I'll get into a bit later, but right now, I just want to stop the talking and get right into breaking down why this Pelicans team looked so good in last night's game. From the get-go, it simply looked like it was just going to be the Pelicans night. Pelicans force the Spurs into a choppy possession here, or should I say, Herb Jones forces them into a choppy possession with his consistently great defense, as despite a very good screen by Pirtle, Jones recovers and comes from behind to work with Valanciunas to chop the ball away, and McCollum grabs the loose ball, runs the floor, hits the crossover, and it leads to an underhanded lay-in for the first bucket of the night. Now, going back to the Pelicans' flaws like I said I wanted to highlight, the team really struggled when guarding dribble penetration plays as you can see here, as the Spurs ate them up on those plays with Johnson and Primo getting to the hoop easily, and either way they can get an easy lay-in or they were able to get Vassal open for a three ball. Now, while this video is breaking down what the Pelicans do great as a team, I'd be silly not to mention the great isolation play from Ingram, as even when the Pelicans defense shows its flaws, they can get those points back easily when you got a guy like Brandon Ingram who can do this. Going back to how I said Willie Green had his guys executing plays great all night, well here's an example of the set and design plays from the Pelicans that have been sneaky good all season. It looks like Herb Jones is going to set a screen for Ingram here, Valanciunas comes up and turns it into a double pick and roll, but CJ is right there and it's right into the stack pick and roll. While this play was obviously designed for Ingram, if the Pelicans wanted 3 points, Ingram could have just kicked it out to CJ and assumably got 3 points easily as CJ was wide open and a lethal shooter. Now this looks like something Monty Williams would run in Phoenix, as watch the Pelicans right here flow in disguise a stack pick and roll. Graham cuts to the block, Nance goes right into a screen, Graham tries to go back and pick everyone. The growth in patient here from Ingram is excellent as he doesn't settle for the pull-up, he goes into a hesitation and draws the foul. Here's another example of how the Pelicans need to clean up their defense on drives before their play-in matchup on Friday night against the Clippers as the Spurs driving opened up a lot for them as they get the Pelicans to help, get to the drive and kick, and get a play right out of that. Here's another example of Herb Jones' smart basketball IQ and great defense as he disguises the scram switch to get the switch on DeJounte Murray late, stays in front, and contests. And then on the other end, he finishes at the buzzer to end a solid first quarter showing for the Pelicans. Going back to how I spoke on how deadly Ingram has been in isolation, McCollum showed another example of how deadly he's been in ISO himself, especially since arriving in New Orleans right here with multiple Spurs players in his vicinity and he hits the shot. Right here we once again see the patience and intelligence Ingram plays with. He comes off and gets nothing on the first screen, waits for the second, knows the Spurs are keeping it on the side, and keeps them engaged and skips the pass to Alvarado for a three ball. Clearly the Pelicans were executing excellent from what you can see, but a legendary coach in Popovich just kept forcing the Pelicans to help and kicking out for nice looks, which kept San Antonio in this game. I know Zion must be excited to get back on the floor with this squad, as he's finally got someone other than Ingram who could simply get buckets as CJ went to work to help the Pelicans build the halftime lead. This fake step right here is smart and got CJ the space needed for this three ball. Right here, CJ rejects the screen, the Spurs have two on him, Jones pulls in on Valanciunas, and Alvarado does a great job of pulling all the way over to get in CJ McCollum's passing lane and get an open attempt as he hits the three ball. 
McCollum continued working as Richardson gets hung up on the screen here and CJ doesn't hesitate to attack whatsoever as he gets right into the lane for two points. The way McCollum fed Alvarado for a three two plays ago, while well, Alvarado repaid the favor shortly as his chippy defense gets him a big steal on Vassal here, and in transition, no one picks up CJ, who splashes a huge three with less than a minute remaining in the first half. And just like that, the Pelicans' energy and them turning it up a notch turned a two-point game with 441 left in the first half into an 11-point halftime lead. The Pelicans got right back into it in the second half though as Ingram realizes the defense is playing over him and he cuts back door as Valanciunas shows why he's one of the best passing bigs in the league delivering Ingram a dime. Herb Jones' energy is so integral for this Pelicans team as he's all over the floor here. Watch him recover to block Pirtle's shot icing the screen then stealing the pass to the corner and it would have been a great highlight on the other end before Popovich and his guys are smart enough to realize they should take the foul beforehand. Despite the Pelicans' great offense and plays though, their defense killed them to start the fourth like I mentioned earlier as the Spurs had a 13-1 run going here and Keldon Johnson was responsible for nine of those points. Johnson attacked Nance twice off switches, he bullied Alvarado and then ran a small dribble handoff with Richardson. Herb Jones stepped up on defense when it was necessary though, as this was a superb challenge from Jones at the rim on Murray after the Spurs have set two screens on Valanciunas to switch onto him. Herb Jones simply gives 110% whenever Willie Green has him out there on the floor. These were two insanely huge buckets from the Pelicans though to end the Spurs 16-1 run, and these were needed badly. The Spurs do a great job of defending Ingram at first, but Pirtle has to peel back onto Valanciunas. Then the second bucket, Valanciunas circles up and goes through Pirtle. The Spurs really challenged New Orleans late, but Ingram made it the Brandon Xavier Ingram show in New Orleans. He gets the shot to go here that felt like the dagger. But Vassal gets the three ball on the other end to cut the lead to nine and forced Ingram to continue to work in isolation. But the shot that was the true dagger of the night belonged to who else other than Herb Jones. CJ and Valanciunas work a beautiful screen and roll. CJ delivers the pocket pass and quickly afterward, Valanciunas says why not one more pass as he sees Herb Jones cutting and Herb Jones truly seals the deal for one of the biggest Pelicans wins in a long time. So this Pelicans team truly looked fired up and locked in last night and the energy that they possessed was great and a lot of that in my opinion has to do with guys like Alvarado and of course Herb Jones and how they play. Willie Green also truly showed his value as a coach as well, and while the Pelicans aren't the team I root for, I'm excited to see how they come out and play against the Clippers on Friday night, and I'll certainly be rooting for the Pelicans in that game as well. I truly do think they have what it takes to knock off the Clippers, however, the biggest question is going to be, will they actually be able to do it? We're talking about a Clippers team that'll be fighting for their playoff lives, and with a great two-way star like Paul George leading them after getting most of the season off, that's certainly a scary matchup for New Orleans. I'm clearly aware of the playoff P memes, so we'll see if we get a locked in Paul George or the Paul George who's hitting shots off the side of the backboard, but all I know is the Pelicans do have what it takes, they're just going to need to show up because Ty Lu has done an excellent job of coaching this team that has been without their two stars basically the whole season, and now he will for sure have a game plan to help his Clippers team walk to the playoffs and it'll be interesting to see who ends up being the winner of that game on Friday. The Pelicans can win that game though, like I said before, if they come out with the same energy and the same game plan that they had against the Spurs. That'll be a bit difficult though, as they'll be in LA, so they won't have the home court advantage and the fans to help them gather that energy. So Jose Alvarado and Herb Jones are gonna have to step up early in that game. Anyway though guys, I want to know what you guys think about this Pelicans team, if they can win that game against the Clippers on Friday night, or anything we talked about in this video down below in the comment section. If you liked the video, then make sure to give it a like as it helps out a lot, and if you're new to the channel and or enjoy the NBA, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell, that way you stay up to date with all the newest content on my channel. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, I'm SCJ, and I am out.
Peace.